this has been a quite a huge debate among Christians on the issue of speaking in tongues. So our question today will be, do you have to speak in tongues to be saved? I would say no. Speaking in tongues is not a requirement for salvation. And the Bible records instances of some believers using the gift of tongues, but it does not teach that speaking in tongues is evidence of salvation. And those who teach that one must speak in tongues to be saved tend to point to a few specific examples in the book of Acts where tongues was a sign of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and therefore of salvation. That's what they say. And when you look in the book of Acts, uh, chapter 10, the Roman centurion Cornelius and his household came to faith in Christ. The Holy Spirit comes on them and they begin speaking in tongues. This was a sign to Peter that these Gentiles were saved and given the Holy Spirit. Peter would have been immediately as, uh, associated this event with what happened on the day of Pentecost when the church began among the Jews. Now the Gentiles were being saved as well as the Jews. And Peter had the verification. This group of Gentiles were speaking in tongues. All right? Now, when you look at uh, the book of uh, Acts chapter 19, verse 4 to 6, the Apostle Paul found out some disciples of John the Baptist, uh, basically found some disciples of John the Baptist in Ephesus. And these men had accepted John's message of repentance, but did not yet know about the Holy Spirit. Let me read for you. Let me read for you this uh, uh, account here. Now, it says in the in the book of Acts chapter 19 uh, from verse uh, from verse 4 to 6 it says then Paul John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance saying unto the people that they should believe on him who should come after him that is on Christ Jesus when they heard this they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus and when Paul had laid his hands upon them the holy ghost came on them and they spake in tongues and prophesied Hmm, all right. Now, you have to understand, Paul pointed them to Jesus and they believed and they were baptized in Jesus' name. Paul put his hands on the men and they received the Holy Spirit as evidenced by their speaking in tongues. In this case, speaking in tongues was used as a sign to them and to Paul that the men had believed the full message of the gospel. It was also a sign to the whole city of Ephesus, that uh, great center of Gen uh, that great center of Gentile commerce, art, and idolatry, that God was ready in 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 work in Ephesus, and there were men fitted to His purpose, able to speak the gospel in whichever language was needed. The salvation of Cornelius and the men of Ephesus represent specific instances in which speaking in tongues was an evidence or a sign that the new birth had occurred. These instances are exceptions and not the rule. You should notice that uh, through the book of Acts and the rest of the New Testament, we do not see speaking in tongues associated with salvation. None of the gospel presentations in the New Testament mentions tongues. Nowhere do we see tongues mentioned. Look at uh, John 3, 16 to 18. Does it mention tongues? Let's listen. Did Jesus mention tongues here when he was saying this? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life, and then speak in tongues? Do we see something like that, speaking in tongues? No. And then he continues, For God sent not his Son into the world to, con uh, to condemn the world, but the that the world through him might be saved. He that believes on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Is there anything, any tongues mentioned there? Are there any tongues mentioned there? Ephesians 2, from verse 1 to 10, let me read for you. Show me where does it talk about tongues here. And you has he quickened who are dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, and spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom 
also we had our conversations in time past in the lust of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature the children of wrath even as others but god who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us even when we were dead in sins he has quickened us together with christ by grace are you saved and has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in G- in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God not of works lest any man should boast for we is workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God has before ordained that we should walk in them nowhere do we see mentioned the word tongues let's also see something from the book of acts it says neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved and of course uh, the the bible goes on and on and on and on the, you can read uh, uh, acts 16:31 romans 10:9 to 13 first corinthians 15 uh, 1 through 4 ephesians uh, uh, 2:1 to 10 we, we all those are verses talking about salvation all right and uh, we are speaking in tongues is is necessary for salvation i don't really understand or even the primary signifier of salvation, we would expect to read much more about tongues when it comes to salvation. But we are not reading this. So, what does it mean? A proper view of the spiritual gift of speaking in tongues is essential in understanding why speaking in tongues is not a sign of salvation. And the gift of tongues was given on the day of Pentecost as the Holy Spirit came to permanently indwell the followers of Christ. The gift manifested itself in the ability to speak foreign languages without learning them and the early church used this gift to preach Christ. You can go and read uh, the book of Acts chapter uh, 2 from verse 4 to 12. All right. Now many translations they basically interpret the word uh, tongues as languages and uh, the greek word is glossa which refers to the physical tongue or to a language some today associate the gift of tongues with the uh, ecstatic uh, unintelligible utterances and uh, heavenly you know uh, languages but that does not fit the biblical model the gift of tongues or languages was meant to communicate a message and served as a sign to the believers Look at the Bible. It says in the uh, in, in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians 14 verse 22, wherefore tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But prophesying serves not for them that believe not, but for them which believe. So tongues are for a sign to non-believers. And of course, tongues ceased with the apostolic age, as Paul said it. All right, Paul said tongues would end. Look at the first Corinthians chapter 13 verse 8. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Look at that. So people are still pushing on tongues, but <laughs> the Bible says tongues ceased in the days of Paul. Whether they be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Look at that. Missionaries to foreign fields must now go to language school and learn the language they will minister in speaking in tongues was a spiritual gift given to some not everyone now do you want to learn a tongue just go to school and study hebrew study chinese study japanese study swahili and go to uh, africa uh, somewhere and go and preach in swahili you don't have to uh, tell god oh god give me a tongue now there are schools go and study learn the, the language and then go and preach simple all right. Speaking in tongues was a spiritual gift given to some, not everyone. All right? Some. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 30. It says, "Have all the gifts of healing? 
Have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? You see, it's not everybody. All right? And also it's never presented as a requirement for salvation in scripture. And the Bible emphasizes that not everyone will have the same gift. Just as Paul asks a series of uh, rhetorical questions in the book of uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 29, uh, 29 to 30, he, he asking, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, do all work miracles, do all have gifts of healing, do all speak in tongues, do all interpret? This implied the biggest answer that you would give to Paul here is no, no, they don't all do this. It is given to specific people. That's a rhetoric question. All right? In the body of Christ, different parts have different functions. Okay? Like you read in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12 uh, from verse 18 uh, to 20, it says, But now has God set the members, every one of them in the body, as it has pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now there are many members, yet one body. So not everyone speaks in tongues. And nobody, not everybody was supposed to speak in tongues even back in those days. And as a matter of fact, uh, tongues ceased. They ceased. It doesn't mean that uh, God cannot work his own ways and uh, you know give you a tongue where necessary. But they ceased. Now people can go to school and lang- learn a lang- language and go and preach. All right? Even in the early church when the gift of tongues was in use, not every Christian was expected or required to speak in tongues. And the Holy Spirit gave the gift of tongues to those that he wanted. He didn't give just to everyone. Listen to this. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 11, But all this worketh that one and the self-same spirit dividing to every man severally as he will. Hmm, dividing, hmm, giving specific people as he wants. God can be seeing, okay, this person, let me give him the gift of tongues. The other one, let me give him the gift of healings. Let me give the other one gifts of this and this and this. All right? And God gives those gifts as he wills. All right? As a matter of fact, nowadays we don't walk by sight, we walk by faith. So it's not about seeing people speaking in tongues and we can say this one is saved. No, it is by faith. All right? Faith in Jesus Christ, his work on the cross and his resurrection is what saves people. All right? 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And uh, by the grace of God also. If salvation requires more than faith, then faith would be accompanied by works which goes again as the teaching of the scripture in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, that for by grace are you saved, not of yourself, not, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. So why are you adding some works? Why are you adding something apart from faith? Why are you trying to say that, oh, we need some speaking of tongues. We need some speaking of tongues so that salvation can be complete. No, that's heresy. Okay? Just as the Judaizers argued that Christians had to follow parts of the Mosaic law to be saved, so also some today claim that uh, for salvation to be effective, you have to speak in tongues. And te- that, that kind of teaching isn't warranted in the Bible. The Bible says very well in Galatians chapter 2, verse 16, all right, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. Uh-huh. Are you justified by doing something? No, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by what? For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. And if a person has placed faith in Christ, then he's or her life will indeed give evidence of salvation. You will show evidence. All right? And this evidence, these works, are just evidence to show us, yes, this person is saved. Because the Bible, in the book of James, chapter 2, verse 22, says, Seest thou how faith wrought with his works? And by works was faith made perfect? Look at that. 
this is the evidence of salvation. You cannot say the wind is blowing to the east and we can't see peppers going to the east and uh, trees bending to the east. Because we can't see the wind, neither can we see faith. We can only see the evidence through the good works because the Bible says in Ephesians 2.10 that we are God's workmanship created unto good works. So after you've been created, then we should see good works in you for which you are created, all right? You're a new creature bearing the fruit of the Spirit, loving others and obeying the Lord will always demonstrate that a person's life has been transformed by Jesus Christ. All right, And uh, when we look at Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Uh, Again, as such, there is no law. So do you possess these uh, gifts of the Spirit? Do you have love for others? Do you have joy? Do you have peace? When people are in turmoil, are you having peace? Are you having joy? Uh, Are you meek? Are you long-suffering? Or do you get angry all the time? All right? Even the Bible says, get angry but do not sin. Are you always angry and sinning? Then uh, when you're like that, then you're not still saved. You should uh, uh, prove your, test your faith. Check yourself if you're in the faith. All right? Because against that, there is no law. If you are saved, then the law is not for you. The law is for the unrighteous. All right? The law is for the unrighteous. If you're a child, let's say for example... The president is is above the law. You cannot uh, prosecute the president. Neither can you prosecute maybe uh, his family members like the royals. Let's say you cannot take the queen to court. You can't. <laughs> She's above the law. You cannot take Prince Charles to court. He is above the law. He's a child of the queen. So if you become a child of God, then the law is non-infective for you. Are you getting the point here? But of course, any other citizen in the UK can go to jail. Why? Because they are not royals. Mm-hmm. That's exactly how it is like. So against that, there is no law. When you become a royal, when you, you are saved, against that, there is no law. <laughs> there is no law for you. So which law is going to be applied on a child of a king? It can't work. The law is for the unrighteous, Okay. And also when we check in the book of John, chapter 13, verse uh, 34 to 35, it says, A new commandment I've given unto you, that you love one another as I've loved you, and uh, you also love one another. By this shall all men know know that you are my disciples, if you have love one to another. Simple. Jesus just says, I only have one law. It is not even a law. It is just, uh, let's love one another. Let's just enjoy. Let's just be us, you know. You're in a family. Just love your brothers and your sisters. Just live in peace and harmony. Enjoy these things. Stop stop uh, saying, oh, I, I'm, married, uh, I'm, I'm, married to, uh, I'm married to this guy. Let's say you're a lady. I'm married to this guy. I have to make sure that I cook for him. I have to make sure I own the, I own the clothes because this is the rules that I have to do. If I don't do this, if I don't cook for this man, he's going to... Come on, that is not love. You don't iron because it's a rule. You iron because you love someone. You don't cook because it's a rule. You cook because you love someone. You don't clean up the house and clean up maybe uh, different things and because you it's a rule. No. God is not after rules. He's after pure heart love that you're doing things. All right? And as I finish, let me read for you also in the book of John, chapter 14, verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. What are these commandments of Jesus that he says you keep them? If you love me, then prove to me that you love me. Do what is right. Walk with me. Do the things that I love. Are you going to say that you you love someone and you don't even care about them? If you love me, then prove it. This is what Jesus is saying. If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, prove it. Proved. You you say you love me, right? You say that I'm your Lord and Savior. You say that uh, you are exposed to me. Then prove it. Show me. Show me. Okay? Living for Jesus. Not speaking in tongues. (laughs) 
provides evidence of salvation you see i i don't even know how to explain about this whole tongues thing whether you speak in tongues whether you don't speak in tongues the most important thing is do you love jesus are you saved because most people try to put this speaking in tongues above salvation above christ is as if speaking in tongues is the main oh, come on it pisses me off to the core when i look at people trying to push people to the neck and trying to tell them you have to speak in tongues for you to prove your salvation for what reason for what reason for what reason are you pushing me to speak in tongues do all speak in tongues do all have the gifts of miracles oh no i don't know what you say but at the end of the day you get my point salvation is what is important if god gives you a certain gift well and good push on but what is more important is salvation all right and that's the end of our today's bible study lesson hope it was a blessing to you hope you did learn something and remember you can always uh you can always uh download this podcast to listen later offline or to share to your friends and family And please don't forget to favorite our podcast and uh, subscribe to our channel so that you can always be notified whenever we post a new Bible study lesson. And if you like to get saved or you need a uh, step-by-step Bible verses on the order of salvation so that you can well preach to your friends and family or maybe you just feel led to support our ministry or buy some cool Christian merchandise, kindly visit our website kithmwoki.com for more details and breakdown. Otherwise, I hope to see you soon in the next one.